and the title is that the God's strength in our weakness okay and um, this is uh, I mean uh, this is getting a little bit tiring right you know we enjoy it at like I think way more than hundred some days of freedom freedom like no others you know all these other countries they were on the strict lockdown like you know Australia and other part of the world or they face this incredible amount of uh, people infected every day and, and consistently people are dying every day and so on but we had an incredible run of the um, uh, so many months of of freedom and uh, and rejoice uh, of our life and rejoice in the Lord but yeah we back in and uh, and in fact at this lockdown time I find and also many people find it a little more challenging than before because it's not the first time and it's been and carry on like this so there's a there's a word like this lockdown fatigue syndromes so let's just see what are those so i want you to just check whether whether you have any of these okay so let's see what are what are the symptoms of this lockdown of fatigue is that the feeling of sadness and uh, irritability is that uh, well when you are limited what is lockdown lockdown is um, you know you you are limited of your uh desire and activity and uh, so you know like one of those things that uh, you don't actually run you don't actually take long walk or anything like that and then suddenly lockdown comes and you feel like oh I, I wish I can run or I wish I can swim in the beach I wish I can go for fishing or you know the things that you actually desire when you know that it, it's not allowed and then this uh, uh, sadness and uh, and uh, one of the challenge is that when we are living together with one another, you know, as a family bubble, that you know it's already limited in the, uh, a situation. It can irritate with each other. So I think we need to be very cautious not to irritate, irritate with each other. But these these things are very common. And uh, you know, people are already struggling with the depression, and it will amplify. So that we have to be uh, cautious with that. And and these are very very obvious things like, you know, anxiety, and the fear and panic, and especially this time. And I even got a message from overseas friends, and they are saying that oh, as uh, past, are you okay? And saying, and I say why? And said that all these location of interest that is all around the church it's in Devonport North Court and all around and uh, in fact many of those shops are you know those uh, essential shops are uh, closed because of the uh, the cleaning and and few things and you know latest you know now 51 case and, um, and 10,000 contacts you know that's uh, that's an overwhelming number so these things can easily create anxiety and fear and panic, but uh, yeah, and uh, just you don't do a whole lot of uh, exercise in the lockdown, and yet you know people find it physically exhausted and feeling of burnout. So, uh, so why don't you just quietly count? You know how many that actually can identify with this lockdown fatigue and the difficulty of focusing, concentrating. Or, or making any decision, you know, indecisiveness. So these are the some of the things. And uh, lack of motivation, you know, just uh, like to just uh, delay everything and uh, lack of motivation or interest of the things that you used to uh, do, okay? And, uh, and even though you can do it uh, with the lockdown, you just find it not so appealing or uh, and I think this is quite common I mean obviously all of our routines are disrupted it's a difficult to maintain some kind of routine so on the other hand in how do we do a really a, a, a positive lockdown time is that uh, creating a routine that you can follow 
not impossible ones. Okay, and um, and um, the last one is uh, either we uh, sleep too little or too much because of this, you know, this change situation. No matter what it is, that if you look at it, and this is the uh, common things that are experiencing all over the world. And so these psychologists, and they collected the, some of the uh, lockdown fatigues. And, and when you counted in more than three of them, and it's that, well, I need to actually uh, look after myself. I need to care for my mental health and my health of my heart and uh, let's look at some of the scriptures and what the scripture uh, teaches about the people who are going through this challenging situation just like you and I right so um, the finding strength for myself and God so here's a uh, first Samuel and chapter 30 so this is one of those moments and uh, perhaps you have seen this uh, before with me uh, um, in the scripture, First Samuel chapter thirty, this is da uh, David uh, when he was with his uh, people. You know these people who were rejected in the society, people who were uh, on the run. They all gather around, gather around uh, David before he become a king, and he himself was a fugitive. David was a fugitive from uh, uh, King Saul. And, um, and one day, David made a, a, a wrong decision, simply to chase after one of the enemies of Israel. And then when they return, they realize that the, all their children and all their wives and the money, everything was gone. So let's just see how uh, he dealt with that. So uh, uh, verse 3, so David and his men came to the city and there it was, burned with fire, and their wives, and their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Uh, then David and the people who were with him and lift up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. I am looking at this, that, wow, what will be the biggest stress in your life if you can imagine this i mean this is one of the really really most stressful moment of king david before he become a king and i not only he made a wrong choice you know uh, hindsight he chased after uh, this other enemy leaving his family and uh, his wives and the children and all the people and their wives and their children vulnerable and uh, they went out and came back and only to find out the enemy has uh, uh, plundered the whole place and taking all your family members as captives i mean that is devastating that is difficult uh, a moment what can you do and these even men of faith and there's David, and along with all his uh, people, they lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. I mean, this is a really, really challenging situation. They were crying and crying. Have you ever done that? You cry and cry, and you cannot squeeze the tears anymore because you've got no more power to cry. And that is the very, very challenging moment. I don't know how many of you have seen the, the footage of Afghanistan, what was happening. And it was really heartbreaking. You know, people try to escape because knowing what is coming upon them, you know, what sort of a life that's going to be a, under the Taliban. So they try to just hang on to the airplane. And uh, seven of them falling down up in the air. And that was really, really tragic. But what was also tragic is that uh, on the uh, airport, the wall, uh, people passing, there, uh, somebody else's kids, little babies, they're passing and passing and, and, um, and carried it over, you know, hoping and praying that that kids will have a, a better life than their life in Afghanistan. And that will be, I can't, I, I just, just my heart was so broken 
overseeing those things, you know, particularly this week, and we were doing Matthew 25 challenge and seeing the world is experiencing incredible pain and suffering and sorrow. And uh, at the moment, Afghanistan is in that uh, moment of confuse and pain. And here, uh, David was experiencing something of that magnitude himself and his uh, fellow warriors and they were so heartbroken and verse 6 it says now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and daughters and his daughters I mean, this will be, if you can just, uh, this is the most horrible thing you can think of. When you think of not just one, but all your children has been taken away by the evil, evil people. And they will do all kinds of evil and harm to your children and your wives. This is a, such a difficult moment for any, uh, anybody. Okay, and the souls of all these people, they were so grieved that that they came to place of that almost like insanity, almost like it's not going to help any situation by killing your own leader, right? But then your when your grief is going so strong, you know, hold on to your heart and your soul is so grieving, and that's the moment people make irrational decision and that's the moment people are overwhelmed with grief and that they will make crazy decisions and that's why we need to look at her when we see somebody is going through enormous amount of grief and pain and we need to be there not necessarily talk a lot but be there and to check them out and are you okay would you like to talk about or oh, just be there shut our mouth and just be there to help them because in that grief people can do all kinds of crazy things and that's why this suicide is such a danger when people are uh, overwhelmed with the grief and guilt and shame and whatever that it may be okay so that was not only David had to deal with his own situation of his family being taken away, but all these people, he's responsible for that wrong choices that he made, although he intended for good, but that turns out to be bad. So, and also they are about to kill you. They nearly picked up the huge stones and tried to kill you because of they are overwhelmed with the grief. What would you do? What can I do? What can we do in a situation like that? And I hope any of you, none of you face that sort of situation in your lifetime. But let's say any of the situation that may cause us this grief and difficulty, what can you do? And here, what the Bible describes is incredible. Even in that dire situation, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. That is the power of our Almighty God who can strengthen you in the season and the time and that is so grievous and that is so difficult that you can still find some strength in the Lord. I think it is amazing that what the faith in God can do in our situation. And I know Many of you uh, will find it difficult falling back to the old habit and uh, going back into the dark place of your mind, you know, whispering to yourself or shouting to yourself all this negative, this just a, a, a taunting of things and even uh, all sort of things to the people around you or even to God. But I want to give you this message this morning. When while we are in lockdown and uh, there is always hope in every situation, even if it is not the situation that King David was in, that when everybody tried to kill you, 
and somehow you are responsible for their misery, not just a, a one or ten people, lots of hundreds of hundreds of people, you're responsible, and your family is at stake. And even in this situation, God can give you hope. God can strengthen you. In fact, because it is difficult, you need more of the strength of God. Because it is more trying, because it is hard situation. It is the time to uh, cry out to the Lord, and it is the time to find strength, find the power of God in the Lord. Okay? So I want to encourage you, don't have a time of break from the Lord because of it is lockdown, because of this situation, because you cannot carry on your business, because there's you're not sure how the... Um, uh, 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 who's going to pay the rent and who's going to pay the mortgage and, and how am I going to... You know what? This is the time uh, uh, not to have a break from God, but this is the time more intensely seeking God. Okay? And um, and I want to I wanna remind you how David did this. How did he strength, uh, strengthen himself in the Lord in this situation? Well, and I'll... Uh, I will tell you that this is not the first time, you know, he, uh, he faced difficulty. This was not the first time that he had to strengthen himself. And in fact, he had a help, helper uh, before. So let's see that what was the um, uh, situation before. This is uh, uh, seven chapters before, okay? So this is another situation when he was in a difficult the time and first Samuel chapter 23 and verse 15 so um, David was on the uh, on the run okay and um, this time and he was not with the whole bunch of people he was all by himself okay and verse 15 so David saw that Saul had come out to seek his life and David was in the wilderness of uh, Ziv in a, a forest. Then Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David in the woods and strengthened his hand in God. You see that? And who came alone? When David was alone in a forest, perhaps in a cave here, forest, he, it, this is not a fun uh, a summertime camping. You know, yippee, you know, I can I can camping, you know, just uh, catch some, you know, wild animal or catch fish. And uh, no, this is, he was on the run. And there's a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, guards, the souls, uh, a special royal guards, and they are uh, searching for you. They, you are the uh, haunted, you know, you are the, um, the one who was on the run. And uh, these people try to kill you. And he is serious, you know, uh, uh, King Saul was serious to kill him. But his son David, I mean, the uh, Jonathan, you know, David's friend, he came to him. And what he did is, you know, Bible described this, strengthen his hand in God. So I have a message for you this morning. You know, I know many of you actually enjoy, enjoy this lockdown. You know, you got more time. In your hand, uh, you're more introverted, you know, you actually feel more connected with God, and that's great. But if you do know somebody is not doing well, you know what? You can. You can strengthen somebody else. I don't know how you do it. Maybe Zoom, FaceTime, and we have all this technology available to connect with others. But here's you know, a good friend, Jonathan, and he went extra extra miles to search out his friend. Jonathan, you know, he could have sent somebody else, but he himself, you know, against his own father, against the king's order that he sneaks out and he made a way all the way to his friend David. And his message is even greater in verse 17. And he said to him, to David, do not fear, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. 
you shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. Even my father soul knows that. Okay. Wow. How would you feel if you were uh, a soul? You know, this is your son. Your son basically is saying that, uh, well, you know, uh, uh, you will be the son. You will be the king, not my father. Wow. What a betrayal, right? But from King David's, you know, David's point of view, that this is the king's sole son, Jonathan, although he's my best friend, and he came over to me and reminded me that do not fear that um, you know my father's hand will not find you. In other words, you're not going to die from this. And you shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. And I'm not going to be the I'm not going to be the king. And who's going to be the king over Israel? If you know everything's go as it is at that situation, is that it's going to be the Jonathan. But then that Jonathan himself, he was reminding his friend David, and I've seen you, and I have, uh, I have come to conclusion that the God has anointed you, not me, and you're going to be the king over Israel, entire Israel. But was that David? I mean, the uh, Jonathan was the first guy who said that. Where in the world, that where did uh, King David heard that word uh, for the first time? And it wasn't Jonathan. It wasn't uh, David himself proclaiming that I'll be a king of Israel uh, sometime in the future. It was actually Samuel, uh, the prophet, came to his house and his own father you know, didn't see him as a, a kingly uh, material. Then all his brothers didn't think that he was a, a kingly material. And yet it was the Lord. And Lord said, you shall be a king over Israel. And that was the calling. That was the purpose of David. There are times that when you face difficulty, there are times that when you are under pressure, we can easily forget what is the God's long term and God's what is my lifetime calling of God. What is the purpose of my life? And that time we need somebody, somebody else reminded us that what's the meaning of my life. And there was a good time, and there was a good friend, uh, a Jonathan came along. And he reminded his friend, David, I could see it. It is the hand of God. And I could see the plan and purpose of God for your life. And you and you will be the king, not me, but you will be the king of Israel. And God has anointed you. And for that to happen, you cannot die from my father's hand. It's a really, really simple logic. And yet we miss so often because of all this uh, situation, difficult situation, because of all these nagging uh, 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 little problems and annoying situations that the people, and when we are in the conflict, when we are seeing this difficult bush and this forest running around one day here, another day in a cave, another day in a, a forest, and you could miss out. Why am I doing what I'm doing? You know, why do I have to put up with this? You know, I just quit. You know, I run really away from everything. Forget the kingship. Forget everything. But then, you know, we could easily fall into that trap. Okay? But if we can remember what is the plan and purpose of God for my life, then you can find strength. And same thing, the later on, when he really finds the even bigger situation, it is not the king's soul, it is his friends try to kill him, and his children and his wives are all taken into the hands of enemy. What could have happened? But in that season, in that time, he was able to strengthen himself. How? Because just like the Jonathan did it before. How did he do it? Remind him 
that who, what is the plan and purpose of God and put his faith in that calling of God. You know, David knew. It's not that he volunteered. David knew it was the plan and purpose of God for him to be the king over Israel. It is not going to happen this way if I lose my family, if I lose my all my uh, best men and this best warriors of family. That is not the way that I'm going to be a king over Israel. So he knew that I'm not going to die from my a friend's hand and he strengthened himself and he rose up and say you know what we can do this we can pursue our enemy and he prayed and God says go you can catch up to them so they ran like you know they they channel the force into the right direction when you are on this enormous grief and you can actually that's when the uh, friendly fire happens instead of actually targeting the real problem cause of the problem that's enemy but instead of, of uh, pursuing the enemy instead of try to uh, fight the enemy and we try to uh, shoot at uh, each other even to their leader but in that moment david knew that what is the calling and what is the destiny of god and he strengthened himself first and then he strengthened others who are on the uh, who are overwhelmed by the grief and encourage them. We can totally do this. We can catch up to them and we can restore our wives and the, the children and all the all of our possession. And based on that, and they were able to, to do so. And once they gone through that, all these people at one point try to stone David to death. And they become the most reliable, most uh, uh, trustworthy uh, uh, warriors for David. You see that what enemy has caused all this hardship and difficulty thinking that that's how I'm going to drown, that's how I'm going to be overwhelmed and die. But then if we can remind ourselves what is the meaning of my life, you know, what am I meant to be doing in this life? And if we can just connect the dot in the Lord, and we shall be able to strengthen ourselves. Not only that, we can be able to strengthen others, just like Jonathan did. Jonathan realized, I'm not going to be the king, although I am in line to be a king, but I see the hand of God. And he was at peace that I'm not going to be the next king, but that's okay. But I see... You know, I'm going to help my friend and who is not to be discouraged. Okay, so here's always the principle. When the airplane get into trouble, you know, oxygen mask came down. What do you need to do? You know, in a panic, you try to put the oxygen mask to your little children and others. No, no, no. It says you put it on yourself first so that you uh, have enough uh, oxygen supply to your uh, own brain and then you can help others so what are we in right now and I want to just pray there's some few more scriptures but I just feel like this morning I want to pray for you that anyone who's going through whatever the reasons you know regardless of your circumstances if you sense that uh, you are in the moment of difficulty I, I am and I, I'm, I'm under pressure you know, uh, I am overwhelmed by, it doesn't just necessarily just the grief or the confusion, you know, overwhelmed by your own issues and problems and not knowing what's the right priority, whatever it may be, you know, just uh, put your right hand on your, on your heart. And I want to pray for you that you will know the, um, the, the power of God and you will know the meaning of uh, God's plan and purpose for your life. You know, Apostle Paul, he knew that he's meant to be, he meant to be in Rome and testifying about Jesus. So no matter what was happening, he knew that Jerusalem and all these crazy people will not be able to kill me. Well, this will not be able to kill me because I know that my calling, that I will be stand in trial in Rome. And until then, nothing can kill me. You know, do you have something like that in your heart? 
over your life God has promised you and you you somehow say yes to it and until that is fully accomplished and I'm not gonna die and this is not gonna sink me all right so put your right hand on your uh, uh, heart and uh, let me just pray for you father God I just pray for your people your God's people who are facing whatever that issues in life they are facing and I pray for the mercy of God God you will remind them that the calling of their life Lord and what God has promised to them not only getting saved and going into the eternity with God that is already enough and that is great in and itself but also you have given them the sense of hope in the, this picture that I meant to be and and even if there's somebody who do not really know what is the plan and purpose of God for their life and right now Lord I ask you that Lord and let them have a moment of God that they would know especially in this lockdown season they will know what is the plan and purpose of God for their life Lord and let their journey and let their adventure start from that moment of knowing what is the plan and purpose of God for their life and your plan and purpose of God is just so abundantly described in the uh, a word of God in the Bible and let them actually seek it like let them actually search it as if they are seeking the um, the, the gold in the sand and let them search in your word then discover that what is the plan and, and calling of God for their lives and not only that, we will be able to strengthen others and we will speak the word of uh, a destiny and the calling of God for their lives. And it is in your word and there are plenty, Lord. So help us be the channel of God's voice to encourage other people who are under uh, oppression, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, and we pray. Amen and amen. And... Um, there are other things, you know, facing personal issues in life. You know, you, you all have different issues, and I have my issues. And I'm going to just uh, quickly, you know, I felt like, you know, that was, I really, I wanted to pray for you guys. That's why I pray. But um, this Second Corinthians chapter 12, it actually give us a little bit of glimpse of um, the problem that even great and mighty Apostle Paul had. And this is how it is. In verse 7 it says, and, and, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a dawn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me okay on this uh, what is what is that what was he saying and he was basically saying and he received a lot of revelation about the third heaven and it's been to heaven I mean we can actually uh, uh, argue with person who actually uh, been with the Lord you know gone to the heavens and seeing everything how everything's gonna end and what is going on in heaven and so on so that's amazing level of revelation and that's why he wrote so many books okay but then the one thing one thing in his life was really really bothering him and using his spiritual discerning powers that that was actually the messenger of satan he was short of it and he raised the dead person to life and he's the one who cast all these demons you know, he was able to heal all kinds of people. And yet, and yet he find it. There's a stone in the flesh. And it wasn't just giving pain to his physical body. And in, in fact, it was actually a bit of an obstacle for him to share the gospel freely. And that's based on that, some of the scholars and they you know, suspect because nowhere in the Bible clearly mentioned what was his physical illness, physical uh, difficulty. So people think that it's uh, some things that it's uh, epilepsy or the uh, some sort of uh, brain injury or the uh, slow in speech 
or incredible migraine headache or cluster headache, you know, some sort of headache related thing, or most people think that it's just an eye problem. You know, he couldn't write because he's got a really bad eyesight ever since, and there's something is just dripping out of his eyes, and there's fast things, and you know, I, I don't know what we don't know what it is, but it is not pleasant to watch, and it actually hinder people to hear the message of God. Okay, it was a thorn in the flesh. And he used the word, it was a messenger of Satan. Constantly, the word buffet, it means it's not, you know, like a buffet restaurant. It was like hitting him. It hit him so much. You know, it strikes him so much. And uh, so he actually it thought, I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to pray. Not just a simple prayer. I'm, I'm sure he was fasting and it just, just focused uh, in prayer. In fact, that is the, the right thing to do, isn't it? You know, when you face any difficulty, there's a constant reoccurring problems and something is eating you. What do you do? You actually pleaded with the Lord and you asked the Lord to come into that situation and turn things around. And that is the right thing, right? And then, then what happened is uh, amazing. What was the response of God to that? He didn't say it in the first time. Otherwise, you know, it would have, he wouldn't approach to God for three times. Not on the second time, and perhaps on the third time, he was praying for that a messenger of Satan, the dawn of flesh. And he seek the Lord, and then verse 9, and, and he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities. He used the word pl uh, uh, plural, so perhaps it's a, not just one. That, my, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the mystery of your faith in Christ and my faith in Christ. We think that my, my life and our life will be so much better if this thing get fixed, if this problem can be removed out of my life. No, you have one of those. I want you to I want you to think of what what will be the one or two things that if if the Lord answer your prayer if, if the Lord just get rid of it right now that that your life will be so much better. Okay, and Paul had his own list and that 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 messenger of Satan he he it was almost like embarrassing he healed all kinds of disease of all these other people he even raised the dead person to life and yet. He could not get rid of it. It's embarrassing. Whenever he's preaching and share the gospel, people can see it. You can read into their eyeballs, and they're not looking at your eyes, and they're looking at something else, but your things. And yet, on the third time, the Jesus Christ, and the Lord says, My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Here is the secret. In our weakness, because we are weak, because we are in pain, because of these infirmities, other people reproach you, you know, something lacking. You know, you don't know how you're going to pay this mortgage. You don't know how you're going to pay this week uh, uh, for the, all these bills. And uh, there are relationships. Some people persecute you for no reason because you are a Christian. Or, you know, you are in uh, actual uh, a pain and suffering because of the um, uh, uh, other relationship and other people or work-related distresses or whatever that you may fa uh, face. In that moment of weakness and pain, because of that, we pleaded the Lord to the Lord and we bring ourselves to the Lord closer. We cried out to God. And that's the moment 
regardless of that outcome, whether God get rid of it or uh, uh, remain, we become strong. Let me repeat that again. Because of all these weaknesses, challenges of your life, that actually brings you closer to the Lord because you have to pray. You have to think of God because God is the only source of fixing this problem. You know, and that's why in a, a time of the wilderness, it was a lot of complaints and so on. But God says that was the one of the closest moments between God and his people. And many prophets, major prophets, they reflect. And that was the time that the people of God and God himself was so close because of all this challenging situation that the Lord was so close to them because they were in desperate need. They are constantly relying on the Lord. That our reliance on the Lord is the strength. And that's the moment that we become strong. Perhaps your physical body may be still in pain, but your spirit is strong because your spirit longs for the Lord. Amen? So look at the bright uh, side. Don't look at the ones that are not there, but look at the things that God has already given you. And that's the power of uh, a praise and, and thanksgiving, you know. And, um, and Paul says, I will rather boast in my infirmities, not for my infirmities. Okay. So I'm not saying that uh, you should just, you know, boast about or thanking God for that disease and for that problems. But in that problem, in that situation, in that disease, and still you can find strength. Amen. And that is that is the mystery of Christian faith. By faith, you can reach out to that strength, that strength of God. It is readily available for those who trust in the Lord. Amen. So why don't we just... Um, Think about one or two situations, one or two problems that you want God to remove out of your life. Well, just because Paul received that some sort of rejection word of God, that it, you know you're not going to have the same thing. No. So, you know God, God will listen to your prayer, but we pray until we hear either God answer our prayer or you know uh, answer us in a way like uh, Apostle Paul received. But one way or the other, you will be stronger in the Lord. So I want you to just picture in your mind that what is that thing that you actually see that this is actually really bothering me, Lord. And this is this just not a whole lot of this. You know, today we're going to just deal with just one or two. That this thing that is just bothering me for me to seek the Lord and for me to live my life for the Lord. So I want you to lift that up in your faith. And uh, Lord, here is my issue. It can be your disease. It can be some broken relationship. It can be finance, whatever that may be. And Lord, and I'm in need. And, 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 and sincere faith and uh, put your trust in the Lord that uh, God can handle anything. Nothing is too difficult for God. But here is my situation. Would you look at this? Would you take care of this? And even if this thing does not go away, and I will pray, and I will rely on the Lord, you know, and that in itself will make me strong. So I want you to, a picture one of the two things in your heart and I'm gonna uh, just uh, bring it up to the Lord and but you know what that is so you speak those things you know in my prayer so well, join with me in prayer Father God we all have issues we all have needs and we all have problems and we want to actually state it out in our uh, comfort of our own room and uh, before this screen and uh, Lord and I have this issue. You, you put in your own word, you know, what is that a first or second thing that you really want God to remove and God to handle. And Lord, and we say all these things 
and faith. But Lord, please look after, please look into this situation. I am in need. Whatever that problem may be, Lord. And you have heard all these people's word. And I pray that the Lord and you would remove out of our lives. But even if you don't, Lord, and we will know that nothing will hinder us from the love of God. And no matter what is going on, and we can find strength in the Word. So I pray for the faith and I pray for the power of God to operate in our weakness so that we shall be strong in the Lord and we shall carry on trusting the Lord. Especially in this season of lockdown, Lord, all your people, and you will pour out your grace upon them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, and we pray. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Okay, God bless you, everybody. You know, um,